We've got to try some food. There's also some water here for you guys. You gotta be thirsty, it's on both sides. We have four different food offerings. We got two on this side. Stadium. Uh, so this is again 13,000 square feet. 
temperature controlled, best seats in the house. Yeah, absolutely. So we launched a, uh, a five-year plan, $337 million renovation to what we think is the Cathedral of College Football, Neyland Stadium. Um, and so we're in year two uh, of five years of, of trying to deliver different amenities and products uh, for our fans, improving our fan experience uh, each offseason. So this year, uh, what we're really excited about is the implementation of Wi-Fi. Um, we are ahead of schedule. We had announced that it was going to be a partial uh, completion at the end of this season. Uh, it looks like we're, we're ahead of schedule, but we're not going to be able to complete that until the end of this year. Uh, but going into game one, we're confident in uh, all of our gates, our plazas, all of our lower bowl seating, as well as concourse one. And then we're going to work between each game in hopes to have a full configured Wi-Fi deployment uh, by our fifth game of the season. So the, the Neyland Stadium Wi-Fi project at, at its completion will be the largest deployment of Wi-Fi at any stadium within the United States. So there's currently 111 miles of cabling uh, throughout the stadium. We think by the end of the project, we'll have over 150 miles of cabling. Um, there's 33 miles of conduit and fiber uh, throughout the stadium. Yeah, so as we, as we mapped out our renovation plan, I think the number one goal for the entire project uh, is to improve the fan experience. And I think in game, uh, everybody would say, I think our, our fan experience team, our marketing team has elevated what you see in venue, uh, the fireworks, the music, the in game interactions, um, they've raised to an elite level and we want to do the same and so uh, investing back into Wi-Fi, investing into concourses, restrooms, things that impact our full fan base is really important to us. Uh, but then also adding in premium amenities. We're standing here in the Lower West Club um, that we had. Uh, the seats were built last year. This club space was in its temporary fashion. We've completed it going into this year. And ultimately, uh, we want our premium experiences to help fund the, over, uh, the overall project and the totality of the fan experience. Yeah, so the, and still from, from day one, our, the number one and largest element of uh, our current renovation is expanding the South Concourse uh, adding a kitchen and commissary uh, that we do not have any uh, currently in Neyland Stadium. And so that will be delivered in the 2025 season. We've done a lot of work um, doing demolition on the old dorm levels one, two, three, and four this off season. We've expanded and done some concrete and steel pours uh, to expand the concourse. Um, and we'll do work throughout this full off season and going into next off season to ultimately deliver a concourse that's 36 feet wide, that's currently 12. So, um, you know, the expansion of that concourse is really going to improve the fan experience, provide more amenities uh, and concessions and restrooms for our fans. And that is ultimately uh, partially uh, behind the student section, uh, but also uh, that Southwest Plaza area and the seat and the seats in that, that corridor. The students are going to have um, a temporary entry for, for this year. Um, ultimately, the construction that we're doing in the southeast corridor is going to improve our student entry. Uh, so to expand the concourses where the students used to enter and come up from ground level or T. Martin Drive, uh, we had to tear out those scissor ramps. So we're building a temporary ramp for them to enter from the southwest this year. Um, we want to provide our, stu our students with the core mission of why we're here in, in higher education at this university. And so um, we want to continue to provide them a private entry. Uh, there's 11,000 of them. Uh, that's a large number of a population coming to one sector of the stadium. Uh, so we wanted, we wanted to build a plan that provided them that same private entry like they've had for previous seasons. So we'll be up in the southwest corridor right off Philip Fulmer for this season and then ultimately moving back to the southeast uh, next season. So I think this is um, the Lower West Club build out is probably the most unique club space of any historic venue in college football. Uh, we took inspiration from some of the newer NFL stadiums and providing a club and premium experience close to the field was our goal. Um, so we have last year we implemented the 22 inch seats, um, the gray seats with the power T. We excavated uh, and, and ultimately built a 13,000 square foot club, has a high end three bars. Uh, we have a premium food experience and private restrooms and temperature control.
Yeah, I'm really confident in uh, the Lower West Club and all the other amenities that we're providing for this year. Wi-Fi, um, like with anything, until you can actually load the stadium. So what that means is the 15 of us walking through here today, we can get on the Wi-Fi, no issues. But when you put 70, 80, 102,000 people in this building and everybody's phones are trying to log on to the Wi-Fi, we're going to ask for feedback. We need feedback. We're putting an AP, so there's over 20. 2,300 APs throughout the stadium. Almost the, the ratio is about one to every 55 seats should have an AP that's trying to provide it Wi-Fi. Um, and so for us, is we call it the testing and tuning like anything. Um, we're gonna ask for feedback and then ultimately between every game, go in and refine and tune those APs so we can provide the best access uh, to our fans. So if we had a preseason game in the end, like the NFL, uh, we'd be able to bring our fans in here, ask for feedback. So ultimately, you know, by game one, Get, you know, between game one and game two, uh, the experience should improve. Between game two and game three, the experience should improve. And we're always asking for feedback, not just related to Wi-Fi, but anything we can do better um, to improve the fan experience is our number one goal. Yeah, can you share how much of that $340 million was invested this offseason specifically? It's kind of a tough question because I, I know what the South costs, but it doesn't have like a break point based on season. I can tell you the Wi-Fi was close to $14 million uh, in its full configuration when complete. Um, 90 million I would give you as an estimate, but it's, I only know what the South costs in total. It's over a two year period. So right. I don't know if I can give you a fair, accurate uh, estimate there. Okay. I think it's coming together really well. Um, I think, you know, when we, when we set out to start this, uh, our goal is to implement new premium areas to help pay for the project. So we're not putting the burden, um, you know, anywhere else. And so I think the premium amenities that we're delivering, uh, ultimately we're going to renovate the sky boxes after this season. Um, and put in operable windows, uh, which I think will, again, it really enhance the experience for our fans. Uh, but the South Concourse, I think I've mentioned today, is, is a huge piece of this. Um, we you know, we, we want to continue. We feel like we have the best and most powerful fan base in the country. Uh, other stadiums are talking about reducing capacity. You know, we could be talking about expanding capacity, but that has to start with first providing the, the necessary amenities. And so as I see that South Concourse, um, and what it is today at 12 feet going to 36 and adding new food experiences, Wi-Fi, restrooms. Uh, I'm excited about modernizing a historic cathedral of, of, of college football and providing the new amenities.